So far in this tutorial series, we've been generating sound within Sensory Percussions software. Today, we're going to explore using Sensory to generate sound in other places, and our vessel for doing so is the MIDI tab. What notes and controllers you have here will shoot MIDI out to all the MIDI outputs you have enabled in your settings. This could be anything, hardware sense, software sense, any program or device that reads MIDI. This allows you to take the power of sensory percussion into other domains. In this video, we're going to look at sending MIDI out over an IAC bus to Ableton Live. I'm using Ableton because its MIDI routing and mapping is quite upfront and easy to access, but most of what we're doing should translate to any other DAW. If you're supporting me on Patreon or would like to become a patron, you can download the SPS file and Ableton Live set file from there for this tutorial and all the rest of the tutorials in this series. The link for that is in the description of this video. If you've watched the previous videos in this series, you might remember using an IAC bus when we covered external controllers. In that case, we were using Ableton to send MIDI into sensory percussion. Now we're taking MIDI in the other direction and sending it out. Actually, in this tutorial, we'll be sending MIDI in both directions between the programs. MIDI going into sensory will just be taking care of kit switching for us, which I find helpful for managing the different examples. Just make sure you have your IAC bus enabled as input and output in both Sensory's and Ableton's preferences. In Ableton, make sure the IAC input is enabled for both track and remote. The output just needs track. If you haven't set up an IAC bus before, I included a link in the description of this video that will get you up and running. To make the managing of these two programs a little easier, I set up clips in each scene in Ableton to select the appropriate kit and sensory percussion for us. So to follow along with the examples, all you need to do is launch the appropriate scene in this Ableton file. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into our first example with the first scene. In the MIDI tab, we can assign MIDI notes to each zone of each drum. I set up the center, edge, and rim with MIDI notes to outline a triad. The kick has a root note an octave lower. This is set up to play a vibraphone sampler in Ableton. Velocity information is sent with the note information, so as long as our destination is enabled to respond to velocity, we're good to go. We can also create controllers to send out on the specified MIDI channel as well. Let's do something familiar like modulating a sample's pitch. In the second example, I have a bare bones drum rack with kick and snare samples loaded on. In Sensory, I have a CC set up to be controlled by velocity, and I mapped the CC to control the sample's pitch. Let's quickly recreate this to show how it works. It's just like mapping a knob on a traditional MIDI keyboard, except virtually. When you open the MIDI mapping window in Ableton, select the parameter you want to map, and then go over to Sensory and wiggle the knob you want to control the parameter with your mouse. When you click on the MIDI tab and click on the mapped parameter of suspect, you can see the range settings here. Now that we've looked into the basics of sending MIDI note and CC messages out of sensory percussion, let's dive into some deeper stuff. Using MIDI from sensory to control sounds in Ableton, you can do almost everything that you could do just using sensory percussions built in sampler. I'm not going to get into that too much because the only reason to not use the sensory percussion sampler for what it's amazing at is workflow. In this video, I want to focus on what you can do with the sensory Ableton combo that goes beyond the current sensory percussion sampler. One thing I love that's in abundance in Ableton is the mappability of modulation amounts. In the sampler, under the modulation tab, you can see that I have this LFO modulating pitch. This box to the right of the destination sets the modulation amount. This is ripe for the mapping of a controller from sensory percussion. I set up velocity to control this. The result is adding vibrato with harder notes. Center to edge modulates the LFO rate subtly. I assigned different MIDI notes to the kick and rim so you can play a little riff. Check out the difference when not utilizing the controllers. Adding them in to control vibrato rate and amount is definitely a game changer. We can use CCs to modulate anything, so let's try a sound source that's not a sampler. In this example, I'm using Operator, Ableton's FM synth. If you don't have Operator, feel free to throw in any other soft synth you might have. Just make sure to only replace the synth and not the whole chain, because we'll be using the rest of the chain in the next examples. 
Here, we're using velocity to modulate the amount of oscillator B that modulates A. This is a great FM control for creating melodic-ish motion without disturbing the fundamental too much. Enable the LFO and use buzzes to bring that in temporarily. Again, contrast this without any modulation. Then use the controllers. Much more interesting. There are so many types of synthesis, and there are so many modulation possibilities with each that are all very cool to integrate with sensory percussion. MIDI effects allow you to alter incoming MIDI in musical ways. With sensory, we can really take advantage of these for melodic and chordal content. In this next example, I have the pitch and scale effects enabled. We're going to modulate the pitch effect with center to edge. This is just transposing the constant MIDI note we're sending every time we hit the drum, allowing us to expand that one MIDI note to a whole melody. Notice that the scale effect is quantizing the MIDI to adhere to a pleasing scale. Let's get into using Ableton clips for sequencing. A sequence doesn't just have to hold notes and rhythms, it can hold any kind of modulation as well. In this next example, we're going to let a clip sequence the MIDI pitch effect for us. You find the modulation sequence by opening up the clip and looking at the envelope section. I like to think of this as partial sequencing because there are no notes in the sequence. This clip makes no sound on its own. While the pitches are predetermined, you still have to play in order for the pitch modulation sequence to be heard. The beauty of this is that the sequence is totally subject to your interpretation. You can skip notes, play more of one than others, whatever you want. Another dope side effect of using this technique is that it frees up your sensory controllers to do other things. In the previous example, we were using center to edge to modulate pitch, but since we don't need that here, center to edge is now modulating the amount of this third noisy oscillator with a looping envelope. Let's try adding drums to this and see what happens. A clap sound is on the rim. What's happening is the MIDI notes from our kick and rim are also playing the synth. While this is sort of cool, let's address how to avoid this if you want to keep the sounds separate. I have our soft synth here in a group. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with groups, but that will have to be saved for a future video. Right now, we can just utilize this key tab to isolate what MIDI notes this chain will respond to. Now we're free to play our kick and clap samples separately and rock out our synth as we please. We can also interact with MIDI effects for a full-on sequence with notes. This clip has a vibraphone riff. Our overall kit velocity is going to modulate the pitch effect which changes the whole sequence. While we're at it, go ahead and try launching this hat clip. The same kit velocity controller is modulating the arpeggiator rate on the hi-hat, which in this case is acting like a clock divider or a ratchet for us. There's a lot in this example that's pre-programmed, but what's cool is that we've also programmed these elements to respond to us. I find this a very satisfying alternative to set in stone backing tracks. While we aren't actively playing every note, these programmed elements interact with us very dynamically, can be controlled intuitively, and are far from static. These pre-programmed dynamic elements don't have to be loops. We can make our clips one-shots that only play through one time. This clip's launch is mapped to the rim tip, and this one to the rim shoulder. Think of these as macro samples that are still malleable. I find this a nice alternative to looping because the material can be sparse or shuffled around. The clip launch settings make a big difference here too. <laughs> 
We've really only scratched the surface of what's possible with sensory percussion sending MIDI to the outside world. The Ableton and Sensory combo is quite dense on its own. In the next tutorial, we'll look at another full song example that incorporates MIDI output from sensory percussion.